Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to your favorite channel on YouTube, Chicago Reacts. I'm Zach, an actor here in Chicago, believe it or not, joined by... I'm Michael. I'm also an actor here in the city of Chicago. No, for real? I am. Yeah. Wait, are you serious? No. Are you? No. What? What? You lied to me this I'm, whole time. I'm, it's called acting. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was so believable. Oh, wow. Like, oh, but I get it now. <laughs> um... Hey, everybody, we're back. We're watching some more Internet Historian. Mm -hmm. We've been loving Internet Historian lately. Uh, if you haven't seen them, make sure to go and check those out after this video. Yes. And check out some of the rea other reactors on this channel. And make mm -hmm. sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Yes. And also in the description, feel free to check out us, too, if you haven't already. We're going to start to link our Instagram and IMDb's down below as well. So you can yeah. get a sense of what we do outside of the channel. All the links. You can watch us. <laughs> Follow us. Stay do, up to date on what we're doing. You do do what you want, but yeah. uh, we we gotta get to the meat of the video. Here we go. Um, the fall of seventy six by the Internet Historian. Yes. I have I have a feeling um, that I think this might be related to Fallout seventy six. Um, the the uh, the Bethesda it's release. Possible. Um, I know there was quite a bit of crap <laughs> um, related to that. Um, so we shall see. I'm kind of fingers crossed, actually, because uh, I love I love me some internet historian. Um, that will be like our camping conversation, and that <laughs> was all for nothing. Um, fantastic. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's jump into this fall of '76. The fall. Oh, oh sure. great. Yeah, yeah we'll yeah, definitely yeah. do that. Yeah. Mm. I think you're right. Bethesda ruins. You're right. If you found this tape, it means that everyone is dead. <laughs> All working at a different office. How did this happen? <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Buckle up, buckaroos. Today's lesson is the misfired launch of Fallout 76. Oh, you can June 2018. It began with everyone getting just a little hyped up. Have we waited long enough, guys? Oh, God, yes, we have, Todd. I think we have. <laughs> Fallout 76, Bethesda's biggest game yet. My god, it was exciting. And they <laughs> promised with no more at E3. E3 hype time. The press conference. 16 times the detail. 16 times the detail. All new rendering, lighting, and landscape technology. Four times the map size. It is four times the size of Fallout 4. <laughs> and it's our biggest one yet. My God. That's a nice jacket, Todd. It's a, you like his jacket? It's a November nice leather jacket. November 14th, 2018. The game goes That's live baller jacket. with a day one patch <laughs> of 50 gigabytes. <laughs> For fuck's sake. I'll see you tomorrow. But once that's downloaded, people start logging into the hellscape that is oh. Fallout 76. Oh. Oh. And oh dear lord, they never fix the bugs. Oh. And there are so many of them. Goodbye world, goodbye necks, goodbye oh. body, goodbye oh. heads, bugs, bugs, bugs everywhere. Server crashes, game crashes, ah. old bugs imported from Fallout 4. Use more than one nuke at a time, uh. server's dead. Texture's far too texturous, an all-consuming oh. void. Oh. Airlock oh. 307. Oh. Can't pick up stuff, can't stop asserting dominance with a T-pose. Ah. Frame rate problems, screen tear Ooh. problems, getting too swole, getting underneath the map, getting attacked oh. by invisible enemies, spawning too many enemies. Kind of speaks for itself. Spawning too many god rays. Also, your camp kind of, resets kind of speaks for itself. Session, and sometimes it goes underwater. Holotapes randomly play static, but too many holotapes mean none of them will play. Enemy AI is far more A than I. Animations are broken. Surprise. Floating objects and a traveling merchant. Just to name a few. Joseph Anson has a great video that documents just the ones that he found personally. No that video way. is three hours long. <gasps> um, 
Um, but it gets worse. So many games. There are CE 34878 can corrupt your data and force you to reinstall the game and console operating system. A few PC players had their computers brick entirely. Also, when the date rolled over to the 1st of January 2019, the nukes in the game stopped working altogether. That's no what I prudent heard to program about. in other oh. years in an always online game. And a few players were straight up logging into other people's accounts. This guy had a level 78 character that was randomly replaced with a level 8 character. Oh. Bethesda said they couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> now, many players are not thrilled Suck. with this game, and they oh, want Bethesda man. to know that. And they what? want everyone else to know that In... too. But Bethesda owns the platform. Is Fallout 76 fun? Yes, it is. Banned for racism. Threadlocked. They had no direct outlet for their rage. <laughs> The only solution was to put a torch to everything else. Reddit, Twitter, Bethesda's other games on Steam. The backlash oh, wow. was immense. But surely level heads would prevail. The reviewers would come out and say that the game isn't so bad. Oh dear lord, they hate it. Despacito, <laughs> play Country Roads. <laughs> <laughs> Julia's shirt. What a title! Oh, look upon that works of despair. Oh, oh, man. And the YouTube community had this to say. It's really fucking boring. I could barely bring myself to play it Angry in Joe. order to finish this review. No one on staff wants to play any more of this video game. I'm not gonna subject myself to another 20, 30 hours of this fucking mess. In short, Fallout 76 is morally, technically, Jeez. and creatively bankrupt. The mods on Bethesda forums were working overtime. The mods on Reddit almost gave up. Look, I'm not saying that some people didn't enjoy and have fun with this game. But what I am saying is that the Metacritic was really funny to read. <laughs> so what happened? <laughs> well, it came out that development was hugely rushed. The deadlines were tight. Too tight. <laughs> Plus, this wasn't Bethesda's A-Team. It's actually a relatively inexperienced division based in Austin, and the scope of the game kept getting bigger. We're gonna need distant weather systems. Hey Todd, I stayed up all night and I just <laughs> We're gonna need 16 times the detail. Please, Todd, no more. We're gonna need four times the size. <laughs> And they were trying to patchwork the old Bethesda oh, creation engine into a multiplayer framework. What else could you expect? That's why I give my kids Fallout 76. The fool! <laughs> Bethesda could tolerate the bugs and the bad reviews and the irate players, but what they couldn't tolerate were the exploits. Um, infinite inventory, infinite invisibility. The frame rate was tied to the game speed, so people were going a lot faster than they should. Server hopping for more items, infinite cash and infinite duplication, unlimited XP, unlimited nuking. The nuclear codes were unencrypted and you could wall clip into the quest room. And someone was given the curse of infinite invincibility. Oh. Naturally, this can really mess with other players' online experience. Mm. So Bethesda was ready, with the ban hammer, this just and a blindfold to wildly flail around and take down anyone who <laughs> happened to <laughs> buy. <laughs> but Bethesda wasn't satisfied with just banning people. No, they're a progressive company with big ideas. They wanted That's to give a road to redemption. Yeah. So support sent out this email to players caught cheating. We would be willing to accept an essay on why the use of third-party cheat software is detrimental to an online game community. <laughs> They're giving them that's detention. Not that's not real. <laughs> that is not. No, that's not real. No when way. No way. Is hilarious. No, if you just write an essay, we'll forgive you. I feel like that's. Uh, you're talking to. Oh my god. The internet community oh and you're god. saying just write an essay. Wait, I'm excited for the turn because I feel like uh, a bunch of people knowing the internet are gonna write are essays. Gonna write essays. <laughs> They're gonna be like the <laughs> best thing ever. Oh uh, let's That's see right. Five hundred words on why you're a very naughty boy, and they may just give you your account back. But a couple of days later the mocking from news outlets caused them to reconsider this approach. 
one more exploit. In all the Bethesda games, there's a dev room. Every item in the game is kept here. I think, I, I, think I had also heard it was one, of, one of my friends someone could just this too, and I think take some, all of the best items in the game and it would be an absolute disaster. Well, shit. Of course, Bethesda wasn't equipped to deal with the issue. People started flooding in, taking the best items in the game, then selling those items on a black market of sorts. At first, they tried the usual approach. Banning people who had some of the best items in the game. You spent 700 hours just to get the best gun? Die, cheater! <laughs> Next, they put in a system where players would get tagged if they ever entered the room, and they banned those players. That wasn't much better because people would just start using Smurf accounts. Get in quick with a level 1 account. Get all that good shit. Then get the fuck out. Then use a duplication glitch to get a ton more of those items. Then transfer that stuff to your main account and you're good to go. Bethesda then takes out this level 1 and calls it mission accomplished. And you've just beaten the game. So the problem continued. Bethesda is running out of ideas to solve it. There's a lot of speculation in the media and among players about how exactly people are getting in, but no one except for the exploiters knows for sure. That said, Bethesda needs to act fast before it ruins the economy of the game. Yeah. So they wrote another email and sent it out to the Smurfs. <clears throat> uh, hello, Cheetah. Do you want to tell us how you did it and we might unban you, please? Should we not hear back from you, the account will simply remain suspended. It's not known whether this approach worked. But from what I've seen, it's still possible to get into the dev room. Uh. November 22nd, 2018. <laughs> Just a week after the release, the game goes on discount. From 60 to $40. To 35 Why To 30 really? You can find it for 15 on eBay. And in Germany, they're straight up giving it for free when you buy a PlayStation controller. Also, controller? Also, zip-tying it to other products. But to Bethesda, it's worth selling the thing at a price close to zero. Because it brings people into the Atomic Shop, which is where the real margins are. And it inflates the poor sales figures. Let's have a look at those. The latest figures show 76 sold less than a sixth of what Fallout 4 did. Not good. There's also been a massive oversupply of hard copies. Although, what's the point of a hard copy when the thing is just a cardboard disc telling you to redeem an online code? And while sales are low, returns are high. Immediately upon release, people began asking Bethesda for a refund. 76 is not on Steam, <laughs> it's on Bethesda's own platform. So they have all the control. If players only played the game for a few hours, then generally they'd get their money back. However, it came out that people were sometimes getting refunds after a full 24 hours of playing. Quite generous, but then word about this spread to forums. Then to Reddit, and a post got 12,500 upvotes informing people that this oh, made pretty geez. much everyone eligible for a refund, and the comments told them exactly how to do it. Bethesda was flooded with requests for refunds. And their response? Shut it down, lads. No, no, no one gets a refund now. Everyone go home. Show's over. Robot customer service man, engage. Customers who have downloaded the game are not eligible for a refund. We apologize for the inconvenience. Die. <laughs> a few things followed. First, they just were wait, like, but no, never mind. We're not doing refunds. Right, but at the same time, like, that's, they were kind of lying about their product. Yeah. Like, like the people that, the, the customers had bought the game with the understanding that it was going to deliver X experience. And yeah, clearly, we're... very clearly, that experience was not delivered. So yeah. how, could you, how could you say that? Because you're losing money too fast. You're going, <laughs> right. mm, we're going to turn off that drain. Oh. We're going to plug that hole for now. we got a, plenty oh. of other holes to worry about. Yeah. I don't know. It's interesting to s compare this to, um, oh, what's the name of the game? I'm blanking. Uh, um, 20 Cyberpunk. Oh, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Because it also has similar. had a very bad initial release. Though I've heard mm -hmm. it's getting better, but. Mm -hmm. Same thing with um, No Man's Sky. That game is also yeah. kind of seeing like a, a rebirthing, if you will. Um, yeah, but <sighs> we'll, uh, let's get through this before we yeah. talk more about this. People got mad. One hardcore gamer even trashed a GameStop for refusing his refund. Oh. 
Thank you for calling GameStop. This is Brian. Man, thank you for calling GameStop. This is Brian. I'm like, but probably also fake. Second, the I media. I feel like GameStop, they can't do it. Like they. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And third, a class action lawsuit. Their inconsistent refund policy and terms of service may not be strictly legal. Right. Oh. November 27, 2018. McGlashio and Rathod LLP filed a class action suit on behalf of customers. Media quickly picked up on that. Their main argument is that it's a sometimes unplayable game owing to its technical problems. That's what problems. I was saying. Then they're refusing refunds, and that Bethesda is engaged in a strategy to release it anyway, and then slowly patch their way into a more playable state. Updates right. on this lawsuit are slow, so I'll keep you informed on the second channel. Ad time. Look, there's a meteor headed straight to Earth. Oh my God! <laughs> He's viewing it we in must the mirror. Do something. Was anyone <laughs> in, curious in a, enough to read about it online? Thumb. Not me. Not me I either. On the moon. Nope. Uh-huh. Oh yes. no! Now people think I'm dumb and I have died a virgin. <laughs> Don't let this happen to you. Get curiosity streamed. Uh, oh, it's a curiosity stream. It's a documentary from <laughs> fiction from around the world. Oh, man. Partial nudity? Maybe if you look hard enough. But more importantly, <laughs> the most arousing thing of all, knowledge. Oh. It works for your Roku, Android, etc., etc. It works on everything, okay? Science, nature, history, oh, tech. It works on a blender. Society. Oh. Just, did you curiosity stream. Skyrim is now playable on a blender. Well. Unlimited yeah, access it's to it's the world's <laughs> free top documentaries and non-fiction series. Use the promo code Internet Storing during the sign-up process to get the first 30 days free, well, then cancel nice. any time. I wonder if it's still good. Pl- please, look, I need, I need sponsors. I, I bought a lifetime supply of toilet paper thinking I was saving money, but then I left it out in the rain and the crows got it, and now I'm back <laughs> to <laughs> The crows got <laughs> CuriosityStream.com. The, the, cro- the, the crows, crows got your, your toilet paper. <laughs> Let's rewind a little bit. <clears throat> Fallout fans made their pre-orders. And the most dedicated pre-ordered the Power Armor Edition. Wow. Oh. It came with a helmet, box, Ooh. map, army toys, That's pretty and a sweet, genuine actually. West Tech canvas bag. Ooh. Is it, it's going to be really so Fast forward crappy, to the release. Isn't it? And customers noticed that their precious bags, which are supposed to be made of the finest canvas and land, yeah. Yeah. It's gonna look be a like bit plastic-y. different. In fact, it looks like a carry bag the real bag should come in. Do they really just advertise one thing and deliver another? Oh, Can't that's do that. So, so there was a surge of backlash, and people began emailing Bethesda, asking for refunds, asking for answers. <laughs> By this point, customer service is absolutely over it. They are done with the facade, and they send this email in response. Hello. We are sorry that you aren't happy with the bag. The bag shown in the media was a prototype and was too expensive to make. We aren't planning on doing anything about it. What? That's the whole what? email. Staff at Bethesda aren't even hiding their contempt anymore. <laughs> Naturally, Art. the internet oh, goes man. wild. Are yeah, you fucking kidding me? Go crazy. Wow. Wow. Well, I got so mad, I shaved everything off my face. <laughs> okay, guys, this is a bit of a PR oh, nightmare. Wow, we have to quell the outrage. What do we do? Well, we've got this in-game currency. Let's just give them the minimum amount of that. Fantastic idea. Hear ye, hear ye. Anyone who paid two to three hundred dollars for the Power Armor Edition is hereby entitled to five dollars worth of in-game currency that you'll be able to spend with us. Five hundred atoms? Fuck yeah! What are you gonna do with your atoms? I'm gonna buy five eighteenths of the white paint version of the Power Armor. Whoa! What about you? Light wood laminate. Light wood laminate. Light wood laminate. <gasps> Fuck the bag. He's right. Fuck the bag. Light wood laminate. 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 Is this a, is this of course. A, what? This was Bethesda's fantasy of what would happen. What really happened is further outrage, and yeah. even the media started piling on. <laughs> <laughs> what a great That's so. It even became Shitty part of that class action lawsuit from earlier. Bethesda put out a tweet apologizing for their curt customer service yeah. and gave a different excuse for why they didn't make the bags. A shortage of material, apparently. Mm, sure. That was quickly debunked. Because it turns out, they did make the canvas bag. Except they gave them all out to influencers. 
Oh dear. It's not the same one, of course. Oh, no. But it's sourced from that oh. ever scarce material canvas. <laughs> but what's more amusing is that it turns out there is a canvas bag in the game. If you don the postman's outfit, which of course can be found at the atom shop, for 700 atoms. Ooh, just short. Well, the bleating from the online community continued, oh and Bethesda's God. lawyers realized there would be trouble. So they are just blowing it on later. every level. All right, fine. We'll make your precious fucking bag. If you want to claim it, you'll have to fill out this form with your name, personal details, address, etc., etc., and we'll ship out the bag to you in four to six months. But right. it doesn't quite end there, because Bethesda is known for bugs, and of course their website is a buggy mess too. Turns out all of the customer support inquiries are unsecure and open to the public. In fact, people can open and close and change them at will. Listed are details of full legal names, phone numbers, home addresses, and more. If you've requested your canvas bag, you've just been doxxed. Not knowing how to oh, immediately fix the problem, no. Bethesda panics and temporarily shuts down the whole website. Oh, and that no. is the That's tale of the Duff So... so how could this have been so bad? Difficult? They made one for New Vegas. One last piece of merch. A oh, rum drink. Nuka Cola Dark. Pre-orders available in September. Shipped out on November 14th. $80 plus postage and handling. Uh-oh. Huh. Not cheap. But in return, you got a very cool bootle. Looks a good on the cool shelf. Bootle. A great conversation mm -hmm. piece with the family over Thanksgiving. Or at least it would have been. November 14th came and went. And there was no rum. Uh, okay. A week later on November 21st, an email comes through. There's a delay. Things aren't up to the usual fallout standard, they say. The usual fallout standard. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was gonna say. Oh. Things aren't up to the usual fallout standard. So we'll have it for you soon. No specific date given. One week later. Nothing. Then on December 5th, another email. Good news. We start shipping on December 12th. It's been nearly three months since you pre-ordered. But as a show of good faith, we made this promotional They haven't before. even started shipping And this yet? is where things went from tardy to oh. retardy. Right there. Did you catch that? That's just a regular industry bottle and a plastic shell. Yeah. We paid $80 and waited a quarter of a year for a plastic shell? People were not happy. Oh. Look at that ratio. Nothing in the marketing said that it was a plastic shell. Super premium, we were promised. And the media agreed. No, Bethesda, no. People began cancelling their orders. Yeah. Silver Screen tries to convince people that it's not cheap and shitty. It actually costs us twice as much to make the plastic one than the glass one. Then what the fuck? We spent a hundred hours coding the design. Convincing stuff. So it arrives, <laughs> just a few days before Christmas. The rum is about the quality you'd expect. Can I swear on this? It's my own show. Ah. Worse is the design. The oversized lip means liquid can pour inside the shell. Hard to pour because how they made this damn thing. I spilled like half the shot. Very dribbly. So you're best off opening the whole thing up to prevent spilling. If you do that, there's a good chance that you'll snap the flimsy plastic. Any liquid will immediately ruin this cheap paper sticker. Some made their own at home and the quality was about on par. But look, if you do want a decent version of this product, there are reputable sellers of them. They're on Etsy. They're far cheaper, and they actually give a shit. Not gonna lie though, some of the memes that came out of this were pretty good. <laughs> now, many claim that this was an honest mistake. Sorry. Or that customers <laughs> were at fault for misinterpreting ambiguous marketing. I disagree. All of the marketing shows other glass items. All of the mock-ups show something more akin to frosted glass than plastic. They yeah. give plenty of descriptions of the product too, and not once do they mention plastic. And they were engaged in a bunch of other tomfuckery as well. Before the product was even available, they flooded their own product reviews with a bunch of five stars. This raised some eyebrows, and what? people on Reddit even called them out for it. So they deleted them. 
you can see all this activity on the Wayback Machine. Now, if they're happy to deceive people in this way, it seems silly to give them the benefit of the doubt about the glass. It's also worth quickly talking about the Bethesda merch store. Some of these items are pretty neat. That's cool. Good idea. I'd have that. Fallout 76 pant. Singular. But why is he so mad? The photography is all just slightly... off. This gaudy jacket was mocked relentlessly on social media. But does the 76 <laughs> in $276 really make it more immersive? And why did they just toss it on the ground? And it comes in this crumpled up toddler body bag. You're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars in merch and you don't have an eye on? Why is she wearing the size XXL? She's clearly not happy about it. But who looked at this and said, good job, print? Now that's surprising. <laughs> and what the fuck? They made the bottle properly. Yeah, one of those, please. But bigger and brown. Is that so hard? And only for $30 Let's get back to the game. when the other December 2018. So there are two new patches released that caused quite a stir. First, the good. <laughs> for PC, they included a number of quality of life improvements, including push to talk. But it also brought in field of view sliders. Hooray! Increased stash capacity from 400 pounds to 600 pounds, and a small buff to automatic weapons. Hooray! They decreased the carry weight of bobby pins so it no longer took up 10 to 20 percent of people's inventory. I got a box of bobby pins the other week that said, that said, weigh these. <laughs> there were also upgrades to the camp that allowed for easier construction and a bunch of bug fixes. Hooray! The bad. A whole bunch of unannounced stealth nerfs. They generally made the game grindier. Emo production was decreased. Fusion cores burnt out faster. Legendary enemies spawned less frequently. On guard, I'll fuck you up. And the backlash <laughs> was significant because everybody yeah. knew why Bethesda was doing it. To encourage people to use the atomic shop. And let's talk briefly about that store. Some of the prices are outrageous. A Christmas tree for $12, a Santa outfit for $20, blue and yellow paint for $18. Oh look, $3 for the same sweater vest and slacks item imported from Fallout 4. But do people actually buy that? Like, like, do, do, there has to be people actually spending money on that for them to do that well i think it's those especially with like christmas trees and santa claus outfits there's such like a gimmicky thing for the time of the year that they're probably Abs hoping someone will be like right yeah yeah God, it's new christmas time i wanted my character to be festive right absolutely but yeah they're but doing but 18 dollars oh, for that's for ridiculous a job you'd on a power armor suit yeah you'd expect that stuff to be a couple dollars. At least I would. I don't know. Oh my god. Um, let us know. Do you know anybody that has actually coughed yeah. up money for that? I mean, I'm I'm sure I'm sure that there has to be people out there. And yeah, if you I mean, if you enjoy it, all the power to you, but like there's well, a like, reason why the prices are as such. Yeah. Um well, if you they, play any other games that are like that, like what is comparable, like for buying like festive stuff for the time of the year? Right. I mean, Halloween, Christmas, I feel like are maybe the two big times sure, where you're like, sure. I'm going to shell out money so I look right. cool and f my character does looks cool and festive. So right. it'd be interesting to see how that compares to other uh, games like that. Wow. Um, let's, let's finish this bad yeah. man. But the biggest defense of all was the holiday emote bundle. $24 for some Christmas themed emotes, twice the price of these games. The media agreed that these were egregious prices, oh but gosh. worse they're engaged in some deceiving marketing practices too. Oh look, it's marked down half price, but it's not, it was released half price. They're artificially jacking up the price only to then give it a fake limited time discount in order to create a sense of urgency. 
That's illegal, here in Australia at least, in Canada and in the EU. Reddit quickly picked up on this and pointed it out. Bethesda reacted by scrapping the discount and just setting it as the always intended price. Okay, it's been about 25 minutes of whining now, so I'm just going to leave it here. That's I didn't even get a chance to touch on the new pay-to-win fiasco. The new camera icon that lets you teleport dwindling player numbers. What? But on the flip side, they're also adding new content and improving the game over time. Heck, No Man's Sky was a surprising comeback. Hey, so yeah. maybe Bethesda can do it too. I feel like... So... But for now... Oh, I'll finish. Todd returns to cryostasis. Elder Scrolls 6. Oh, Hiding man. in his bunker until the bombs of outrage stop falling. And returning only when it's time <laughs> to get our hopes up once again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I. So I never played Fallout 76. I played some of the other Fallout games, so I was, really right. wasn't aware of this. But it does remind me of, obviously, Cyber tw- Cyberpunk. 277 mm-hmm. I think is the most recent like uh, game that has had this type of a horrible horrible release. Well, and I know that, that's tra- that's what's so like I mean sorry sorry to cut you off no, but no, like you- that that's what's like so bad about it to me is like how did CD Project Red not see this and be like you know what well, let's let them finish the game. I wonder let's let them if finish they the game. did. And I mean you've seen other like they did and then went okay how can we not fuck up as badly i mean i think i mean there's there's this whole thing in the video game development world where you know you get into crunch time and you have all of these programmers working so quickly to put out this game and they really don't have the time or the resources so they put out a game that isn't finished Mm -hmm. to bank all of the uh pre-order money right and then use that to actually actually finish the game right and it's a bad system but but the reason why it continues to be as such is because people still pre-order games. Like, right. stop yeah. pre-ordering games. Like, it, it's literally as simple <laughs> as only, that. Yeah, but, um, but they're so good at hyping it up. I mean, oh, it's... Right, that's right. A, they're, they're good at that, you mm-hmm. know? So it'll be interesting to see when that breaks. I mean, you also... I mean, if the video game community of programmers is ever able to unionize or things like that. I mean, that could also help change this because then you won't have video game companies burning through talent because they can't work 80 hour weeks or or whatever, you know, like, right. Or more than that, trying to put out this game, game you know, so it's really interesting to see like they just blew it on every level as opposed to, I feel like, uh, no Man's Sky and Cyberpunk 2077, I feel like, are doing a lot more to right the ship. That being said, uh-huh. I haven't really played either of those, right. so I am not really speak. I'm just speaking from hearsay. Mm-hmm. Um, but, it, but I wonder if they're like, if it's a, it's their ploy. It's the game. They're like, they're strategically releasing them when they're not ready and right. just hoping they can right the ship in time. Right. It's like and. What a a roy- for lack of a better term, what a royal fuck up um, yeah. from not only to just screw up your game that badly, but how this then extended into literally every other element of like physical merchandise. Right, um, right. They even blew it on every level. Yeah, even even some of the patches that they released, like a day one patch of fifty gigabytes that li- like literally you are telling people. Hey, you just bought this game, but you actually can't play it today because you have to download 50 gigabytes worth of data before you can even right. start playing our game that you just bought. Um, yeah, and and then I mean, like you got like with the bag and the the rum too that that whole fiasco, and then the atomic yeah. shop fiasco, and then how they went about fixing it, and co- they were more worried about covering it up. And then I think the one really cool thing to see about this is how the community came together to call them out on it, which then got 
enough of uh, enough influence within that community that news outlets then started covering mm-hmm. it. Um, well, I'm glad they followed up through with lawsuits too. Because yeah, because you can't seriously. do that stuff and it's illegal. Like, right. So I'm glad they jumped <laughs> on that. But I think what's so unfortunate is you know you have this company that has garnered a lot of support and created these games that people love. Arguably, truly love. arguably some of the best, yeah. best, not only video games, but pieces of entertainment media of all time. Yeah. Like, like what, what the game Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, like what that game has meant to not only the culture of video games, but I mean, Skyrim has like... I, I almost equate it to like Stephen Curry or LeBron James in basketball. Like Skyrim brought non gamers into the world yeah. of gaming. Mm. Um, it, it really helped to reinvent and re expand yeah. the the influence that gaming has um, as as a tool to influence people. Um, and so they are. But that was well, probably one of the most untouchable. Yeah video game companies companies period yeah before this and i feel like they switched looking at this fan base as like ooh, what can we do that they'll like and to how can we we exploit them for the most amount of money it certainly you know? comes across as such and their their actions even post screwing up um didn't do anything to necessarily yeah. like make us believe otherwise right. or, or invest any good faith back into them. And I'm curious because this comes after Grand Theft Auto. And I, you know, I, again, I'm not super inundated in the video game world, but I, I believe like Grand Theft Auto is the, the most, uh, like they've made the most money off of Grand Theft Auto than any other game by far because of in-game currency. And I wonder sure, if this sure, was sure, Bethesda's sure, right. attempt to create like uh, a Grand Theft Auto for uh, for in-game currency stuff, and if if they just got so focused on that that everything fell away. But again, mm-hmm. so terrible to have such a loyal fan base and then just totally ruin it because you're looking to exploit your fan base as opposed to you give them something of value. Right. It just. Just complete your games. Um, it, it's gonna, it's gonna do a lot. Um, and and nowadays with the negative impression that that Bethesda from this, um, I mean, it seems like EA EA is now in in the news media everywhere because of all the loot box stuff, especially with FIFA Ultimate mm. Team. Um, they come, these massive companies have just royally screwed up on so many levels time and time again, where over the last 10 years, it's like this is just happening again and again. So what these companies need to do is just start releasing finished games, even if it means temporarily going in the red while you finish the game, but release it to the good graces of the public. And all of a sudden, by just simply releasing a finished product, you are going to be praised for that. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's Well, I think that's where, I mean, again, that's what's nice about the demand democratization of the internet is you have these indie game developers who can come out on top or get gain support it's not just in the hands of the big the publishers games, right, you know like right. there's other great game developers who can create something awesome and who actually like the gaming community and aren't just trying to exploit it yeah. um so make sure you're supporting your indie game developers because they're now doing more it for the passion yeah. and the love of creating a mm-hmm. good game. Um, and don't don't take that for granted. I think I think I think a lot of I think especially if you're still here with us listening to us ramble. Yeah. Um, don't don't take that stuff for granted. I don't think I don't think you are. I don't think you guys would be the type of people to do that. But um, yeah. yeah, just keep keep these things in mind. Like remember what can happen when. Yeah. You know, massive amounts of money gets involved because it just just can royally screw up a lot of stuff. And speaking of being appreciative to fan bases, <laughs> thank you all for watching uh, all the React videos on our channel. Mm-hmm. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. We really appreciate the support. We love all the comments that you leave in the comment section down below. We try to like and engage as much as we can. Mm-hmm. Um, make sure to you know suggest any other videos if you're interested uh, or that you'd want us to check out. Uh, We have a bunch of other Internet Historian videos we've been reacting to recently. Mm -hmm. Go check those out. And thank you so much. 
Uh, hopefully we're over the 20K mark by now. Yeah, Heading hopefully. towards 25. So if you can help us get there, we'd really appreciate it. Yeah. And if, if also, if you like Michael and I's uh, perspective on gaming, we have on the channel too, if you're fairly new, we have reacted to several different, like all the different World of Warcraft cinematics. Mm -hmm. um, we've reacted to like things like the Diablo 4 announcement trailer. So we've done quite a bit of stuff with gaming. Starcraft 2 as well on the channel and, and some Warhammer 40K stuff. Um, we recently did a Left 4 Dead trailer that we reacted to. So feel free to check out that stuff as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we, we love doing that stuff, and it's a very cool way for us to engage with you guys. So, um, we'll, we'll shut up now. This has been a long <laughs> video, and uh, yeah, appreciate you guys more than you know. And um, we'll see you see next, next time, time on Chicago, Chicago Reacts. Reacts.